Hi guys, be here with a new Unreal tutorial, an arcade minigame in VR. This first part, I will explain how to create arrows and the bow. I will use the base pickup project from my previous video, so make sure to check that out. Let's go! I have here a clean scene with the VR pawn, nothing on the environment, an example of the arrow, a blueprint, and an example of the bow. Let's take the arrow first. The arrow is a pickup. It doesn't need to be, but I decided to do it for convenience. And as you can see, the arrow has the same elements as any other pickup, a root, a base, and an interactive collider. I added a mesh to represent the arrow, which is this one. And this is something that comes from the pickup, which helps me when I grab any kind of pickups. This is a thin component to put the, the pickup in the correct position and when I grab it with my hand. The bow is another pickup. Again, the root, the base, the interactive collider, and that new pickup snap locator. Nothing new here. The, the bow has uh, this element, which is a snap arrow locate locator, which I will use to spawn the arrows in the proper place. I added two cable components to make that nice rope effect when you pull the arrow. I also have this cable helper locator and that's just to pull the both cables. You will see what happens later. And of course the static mesh to represent the bow. The bow. Let's take a look at the code. Here we have the arrow which extends from the pickup. This is convenient. It's not really, I'm not really using the pickup functionality for this arrow. As an extra, I added the mesh because I want to have access from C++. If we go to the constructor, we can see that I'm creating the, the default object and attach it to the base. And as a default, I'm disabling this pickup because I don't want to have any anything related to the pickup for the arrow. I have this helper method when I spawn the arrow on the bow. This, I use this method right after I spawn the arrow. And as you can see, uh, I have a new scene component as a parameter and an offset position. So the attach to object, all I'm doing is disable the pickup. No, no physics, because I don't want physics on the arrow when I spawn it. And then I'm disabling the collision on the base, physics, and the gravity. And I do the same with the mesh, so I will prevent any kind of gravity or collision between the bow and the arrow. And last thing is to attach this pickup or this arrow to the object that I pass as a parameter. Okay, this code over here is just to, to put this, the, the arrow in the same place as the object passed as a parameter and with the slice of the position that we will see why. The next method I have for the arrow is the update x location. I'm basically using this method when I move the arrow on the bow. And that's all I'm doing. I'm only using the X location, you will see. So when I pull the arrow on the bow, it will go only in the X, the axis X. Next, we have the blueprint event and the, blue, the event on shoot. And obviously I use this blueprint event when I shoot the arrow from the bow. I have one for the blueprint, so I can use this and add that sound that you can hear when I shoot the arrow and the implementation on the C++. As a parameter, I'm sending the force for the arrow. And the logic is very, very simple. First thing when we shoot is to detach the base component or the pickup 
from anything so it will go free after that I enable the physics the gravity and also the collision again only on the mesh because I have a collision completely covering the mesh of the, the arrow and next thing is just to add the a force so I'm using the physics engine to move the arrow but I'm using the base get forward vector from the base because I know it will point at the right direction finally I have a, a timer to destroy this arrow after a while and all I'm doing is cleaning the, this timer and destroy the arrow and as we can see I have the delay to destroy as a U property so I can change the values on the on the editor the bow code is a bit more complicated it extends from the pickup because in this case I want to take advantage from the pickup code drop and pickup dots And I have extra components. I have the snap arrow locator, which I will use when I spawn an arrow. I have two cable components, one at the top and one at the bottom. And this using component cable helper location will help me to move both cables top and bottom at the same time with the hand controller. So all of these components are adapted to the base. Next thing is to get a reference to a blueprint class arrow to a spawn. And here I have the current spawn arrow as a reference. Also I give this boolean to check if I can spawn an arrow or not. The bow uses both controllers. For example, with the left hand controller we grab the bow and with the other one we shoot the arrows. That particular logic is implemented on the pickup and drop method of the pickup interface. That's why I override both methods. A reference to both controllers are kept in this class. One is the current controller that is kept on the pickup parent class of this bow. that one and the other controller is kept in this class I also have a reference to the sphere component of the controller which is um, it comes with a blueprint VR template and the pickup implementation is where we spawn the, the arrows this First time when the pickup method is triggered by the controller, this means that we are picking up the bow with the first hand. So we disable the collision of this pickup or this bow and the physics. And we said that we cannot spawn arrows just yet. So at this state, we have the we have the, the bow in the left hand, for example. Next time this pickup method is triggered, it will be with the second hand. And this is what I'm doing in this part. So this means that I'm not, I don't have a reference to the other motion controller just yet. And it's not the current motion controller. So this means I'm picking up the this bow with the other hand so I'm ready to spawn arrows and, and shoot them so I get the reference to the other motion controller and I'm looking for the sphere component and I said that I can spawn arrows the next part is when I spawn an arrow so I have both hands Taking, uh, picking up the, the bow so I spawn an arrow and I use the spawn arrow location locator 
for taking the transport. So the arrow will have the same rotation and location. Next thing, I'm taking the X position for the arrow. And for that, I'm using the, the sphere component of, of the second hand motion controller. So I'm taking the location, which is in a different space of this bow. That's why I need to transform the position. So this location and this space location will be on the same same space. Next is apply a slightly offset in the Y axis to spawn the arrow on the left side of the, the bow or on the left side, on, on the right side, depending on the second hand. Next thing is update the X location that we got from here and attach the, this current arrow that I spawned here on this snap arrow locator. And finally, I'm just updating the cable location for both cables, the top and the bottom, the same way I'm, as I'm doing with the current arrow. So I'm just taking this clamp uh, to take the, uh, I take the X position and I just clamp. And that's what I'm doing with the with the cable helper loca locator. And finally, I said that I cannot spawn more arrows just yet, and I'm gonna update the position of the arrows on the tick. So when I move the second hand, I will update the X position of the arrow that I that I have on the on the bow. Immediately after the arrow is spawned on the, the bow, I will update the arrow position with the second hand controller. That, that is in the tick. So obviously I need to check first if I have the second controller, if I can update the arrow position and if we have any arrows. And the code is exactly the same. I'm taking the X position of the motion controller sphere, the tick, for both the arrow and the cable helper locator. So I will update both the arrow or the X axis only and the cable, both cables. And finally, I have this check just to make sure that I don't have my second hand far away from the from the bow and just uh, just shoots the arrow when this limit is reached. Finally, on the drop method is when we shoot the arrow. So as soon as I this method is trigger, it will shoot the arrow, but only it's going to happen if the, this motion controller is the other one, not the first one. In that case, that means I want to shoot the arrow and I call this method to shoot the arrow. Otherwise, that means I'm just dropping the, the complete bow and I just want to reset everything to default. So I can spawn arrows again, I destroy the current arrow if there is any. I set a null reference to the other motion controller. Also a null reference to the current spawned arrow. And I just set the physics simulators to false and the collision as well. Finally, the shoot arrow method. Here is when I calculate the, the force that I'm gonna use to shoot the arrow. And I, I'm taking, I'm calculating that with the star arrow position and the last arrow position that we are taking on the tick. I have a minimum arrow bow force, which is an U property.
and I'm multiplying that for the distance. This check is just to, to, to set the first arrow to zero if there is not a minimum, the distance hasn't reached a minimum. The next thing is just to call the onshoot method with that force arrow. And then I reset everything. Finally, I reset the cable helper locator to the initial cable location. I take that on the begin play. So both the top and the bottom cables will go to the initial position. And that's it, that's everything for the bow logic. Let's take a look at the bow blueprint again. The snap arrow locator is uh, over here. So all arrows will spawn in this place and they will be attached to that snap arrow locator. In the code, I apply that offset, so I will spawn the, I will place the arrow here or, or here, depends on the on the hand. Finally, this is the cable helper locator that I use to move both cables, and that happens because both has the attached end to the cable helper locator, and that's all the explanation for this mini game. This is the end of the video. In the next part I will continue working on this mini game. I will add some targets to M and so that so you can have some fun. Thanks for watching and if you like the video please subscribe. Bye!